Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. You are watching Full Take. Finally, the day came for the stable Oxon OS 13 after two beta updates for the OnePlus Nord 2. I am using the Oxon OS 12 C14 update on my OnePlus Nord 2, and yesterday morning I got this official update by the OnePlus. Today in this video, we will see how we can update to the stable Oxon OS 13. We will test all the previous issue has been fixed in this update or not like CPU throttling, performance mode issue. At last I shown some bugs that still persist in this update and finally I shown how you can downgrade to the Oxon S12. All the change log features are already discussed in the first beta update video. You can check that from the link given under the video description. So watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. Let's first check out how you can update to the stable Oxon OS 13. This update only released for the Indian and the global users, not for the EU region. Your device must be on the stable Oxon OS 12 with the build number C12, C13 or the C14 or any beta version of Oxon OS 13, F20 or F21. If you are using the Oxon OS 12, then go to the about phone, there go to the Oxon OS updater, tap on the three dot menu. Then tap on the beta option. Don't worry though you are going through the beta tab, we will still get the stable update. Now you will get the try official version option. Tap on it. You have to apply for the official version. You will get the long change log list for this update. At the bottom, check mark the agreement. Then tap on the apply for the trial. Now it will show you the application submitted. Now tap on the green check for the update option. That's it, you will get the new OTA of Oxon S13 stable, official F22 version of 5.44 GB in the size. This is a stable official version, tap on the download tab. If you are already using the Oxon S13 beta F20 or F21, then you don't need to follow any of these steps, you will directly get the new OTA of Oxon S13 stable F22. Once download gets completed, tap on install now button. Phone reboots and flashing up update takes 5 to 10 minutes. So my phone booted back to the brand new stable Oxon S13. Now let's jump to the about phone to check the details of the new update. Under the OT section now it's showing we are upgraded to the Oxon S13 F22 stable official version. About phone version showing all the feature chain lock for the new update which we already discussed in the old video. Under the Android version, it's showing this is the Android 13 update with the material clock hysteric. Security version is updated to the latest 5th April 2023. Old beta F21 was on the February security patches. Under the version section, it's showing the build number as F22. Kernel version is 4.19.191 plus. Now let's start the fixes done by the OnePlus for this update. First start with the performance fix, in the last OTA, Geekbench results for the normal mode are higher for the multi-core as compared to the performance mode. So we'll first check the performance by running the Geekbench test and we'll confirm is it solved or not. ROM is running very smooth on the ADAPT to 90Hz mode screen refresh rate. It goes to the 60Hz when device is not in the use and rises back to the 90Hz when you start to use the screen. Only camera application runs constantly on the 60 hertz all the time. So overall the ROM is running smoothly without any lag. First I ran the test without performance mode enabled. In the first round I got the score of 1094 and 3197. For old F21 these values are somewhat lower 965 and 3165. Next I did the OpenGL graphics API test here I got the score of 4569 and for Hulkan graphics I got the score of 4568. For old F21, these scores are 4587 and 4568. So these results are nearly same for the both the builds. Now let's enable the performance mode and we will see if any performance drop issue we will see or not. After running the test on the performance mode, results improved a lot. We got the score of 1251 and 3414 for the single and multi-core respectively. If we check the old F21 results, there we got the score of 1231 and 2875 which is totally crap in front of current build results. So the issue of multi-core performance drop for the performance mode has been fixed here. 
significant improvement has been found for the OpenGL and Hulkan graphics API on the performance mode. I got the score of 4726 and 4959 for the OpenGL and the Hulkan graphics API respectively. For the old F21, these rears on the performance modes were 4805 and 4951. There is only slight difference found between the stable F22 and F21 for the GPU graphics on the performance mode. Performance has been improved for the new stable build and the issue of multi-core performance mode has been solved too. Now let's check out the another fix for the CPU stability using the CPU throttle application. I ran the CPU throttling for the 5 minutes on the 20th test for this new build. During the test, no performance drop found at all. Hold the graph seems green and stable. When I stopped the test, I got the score of 92%. As summer season is going on here in India, still during such hot environment, score seems very good. If you check the old F21 video, there I got the CPU throttling of 69% which is very bad and actually from the last Oxygenus 12 to beta Oxygenus 13, this issue was there for every update. Finally from the stable F22, this issue is fixed now. Next fix has been done for the OIS for the camera. In the previous beta Oxygenus 13 updates, optical image stabilization is not working. So I tested the video recording with the ultra stability mode enabled in the extremely shaky mode and the videos under this mode seems very stable without any issues. So it's confirmed that the OS is working again. Next issue that I face in the old F21, I can't able to install any application that are transferred using the Xiaomi application. But in this build, all the application got successfully installed. If your device bootloader is unlocked, so safety net gets failed. But most of banking and security applications are working in this build. I tried some most secured banking applications like the Axis Bank, ICICI, and they are working well. But one application that is not working that we will discuss under the bug section. So these are all the fixes we've seen. Now it's time to show you the bugs or the issues in this update. If your device bootloader is unlocked, then only you will face these issues. Though the wide one security will be on L1, still device play protect is uncertified. So some applications like the Netflix can't be installed on the unlocked bootloader devices. Next, some banking applications or secured application may or may not work on your device. Like I tried Axis Bank, ICICI Bank, both of them are working. But Yono SBI Lite is not working on the unlocked bootloader devices. You can use the root method to solve such issues. Its video link is given under the video description. Another serious issue still persist in this update is no fastboot mode and the no BROM mode are working on the Oxygenus 13. Only fastboot D mode is working, so we can't able to recover the device if something goes wrong because no fastboot and no MTK client is working for this update, which is very sad news. Except this notification bar is removed from the notification panel for the Pac-Man users because of some framework issues. Finally, if you don't like the update, then you can directly downgrade to the Oxygenus 12 using the downgrade package given under the video description. Download it, place it in the root of the storage. Remember the file name must be same like you can check on the screen. Now go to the about phone, there go to the version section, there tap on the 8 times on your build number, this will enable the developer setting. Now again go to the about phone, there tap on the OT update, there tap 3 dot menu, then tap on the local install and select the downloaded downgrade package. System will verify the update, once done tap install, phone reboots and flashes the downgrade package. This will erase all the data on your phone. So this is all about the new OTA, battery backup needs to be tested. I will report it with the community post after 4-5 days. Until then, if you think this video helped you, then please do like and share this video. Subscribe our channel, press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching, see you next time, take care, bye bye.